Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Gemma Johnson and today I'm joined by Sam Holland, Senior Director and our Accounting Officer based in London. We are going to discuss three recently published articles on accounting which are particularly relevant to European issuers. Sam, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks Gemma. Perhaps we can start by you giving an overview of the articles that have been published. Absolutely, Gemma. So th the first article I wanted to talk about is around IFRS accounting options and how they can be an impediment to comparability in financial statement analysis. The issue really here is that under IFRS, companies are afforded too many accounting choices they can pick and choose from, uh, which means that identical transactions are often presented in very different ways uh, with no clear underlying justification. Could you give us an example of that? Sure. So um, what one example is around the, the, the classification or the presentation of cash flows in, the, in a company's cash flow statement. So taking Vodafone, if Vodafone were to reclassify its cash interest and its cash dividends received in the same way as its peer company Deutsche Telekom, then um, its operating cash flows for 2013 would have been £3.6 billion pounds higher or 58% higher. So that's, that's clearly a huge difference arising purely from an accounting choice. And we think there are plenty of uh, similar accounting choices that cause distortions and which could actually quite easily be eliminated. So we've encouraged the IESB, the, the, um, the standard setter, to look at this issue as part of one or two projects currently underway, the conceptual framework project and the disclosure initiative. These are both looking at the fundamental fundamentals of accounting and financial reporting and we think that an examination of accounting options would fit well with those initiatives. Interesting. Okay, so what was the second article focusing on? The second article is called Taming Ambiguity and it looks at how regulators are currently seizing the initiative with respect to alternative performance measures or, or APMs. These are the um, additional disclosures that companies give over and above their, um, their metrics that they calculate under IFRS. So a company, for example, might, as well as um, preparing its um, IFRS operating profit might also disclose companies, the company's or management's own view of underlying earnings or adjusted profit. Um, and we've long held the view that those adjusted figures can, can, can sometimes be misleading. So we looked recently at the FTSE 100 and found that 21 corporates in that group were um, regularly excluding restructuring costs in their ad adjusted earnings figures, even though they reappeared year after year. So we do think there's an issue here, actually. And you mentioned that the regulators are taking the initiative on this. Can you perhaps explain more? Absolutely. So, so ESMA, the European regulator, launched a consultation paper on this early in the year, setting out some, some very sensible proposals for how this could be addressed. So requiring companies to reconcile an APM to the nearest financial statement measure, for example, and giving clear disclosure around the use of APMs. We support those proposals, but we think that, frankly, they could, they could go further. So in the UK, the Financial Reporting Council has recently proposed um, its own recommendations on adjusted profit figures in particular, so suggesting companies should be even-handed between uh, removing gains or losses, um, suggesting that things that are regularly um, adjusted for every single year, whether that's appropriate or not, so back to the restructuring point I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so we wonder whether or not similar guidelines might be usefully um, rolled out throughout Europe, and so we've, we've urged ESMA to consider that as part of their final proposals, which will be released in the, the last few months of this year, we believe. Okay, and the third article was about finance leases, is that right? That's right, lease, lease accounting generally, uh, Gemma. So lease accounting has been a sort of long-standing issue for companies with uh, lots of leases off balance sheets, operating leases in particular. Uh, and these, these proposals are aimed at bringing those back on balance sheets, which we're very supportive of. Um, until recently, the, t the two boards, the ISB and the FASB, have been working together to um, arrive at a unified solution for lease accounting. But unfortunately, in recent years, or recent months rather, they've deviated in their um, proposed treatment for leases on the income statement and the cash flow statement, which we, we don't like because we prefer global comparability in accounting. Um, incidentally, we, we preferred the ISB's proposal around um, treating all leases as, as financing transactions, which is how we view them. But I think the most important thing for us is that if the two accounting proposals do end up different, there must be um, sufficient disclosures to enable an analyst to compare a company in America to a company in Europe and, the, and their different leasing arrangements. Okay, so we should continue to keep an eye on that. Absolutely. Sam, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome, Gemma. For more information on this report and all of S&P's research, go to www.spratings.com. That concludes this edition of Credit Matters TV. Thanks for joining us.